So for today, we're going to be looking at Bayonet Charge by Ted Hughes. It's interesting to note that this was written some time after the war. You'll notice from Ted Hughes' date of birth, he was born some time after the First World War. In fact, there are arguments that Bayonet Charge as a whole is an allegory for what was happening in the world at the time when he wrote it. However, for us and our context, the point is that the poem is about a nameless soldier going over the top in the trenches. The soldiers would have bayonets or swords attached to the end of their rifles and they'd use them to stab the enemy soldiers if they ran out of bullets or simply end up too close to them to fire effectively. The nameless soldier in the poem seems to become more of a weapon than a man rushing towards the enemy. It's not clear at the end whether he dies, but there's certainly a change within him. His actions are very raw and primal, much like an animal, and we get this comparison between a hare and the, and the soldier. He suddenly starts pausing and is preparing to react. The poet, Ted Hughes, was a former RAF serviceman, and it includes a great amount of natural and historical ideas in his poetry. He often looks at man's impact on nature, so it's interesting here that we see the effect of conflict on man. Starting at the start of the poem, which would be a sensible thing to do, really, um, we start with an adverbial phrase of suddenly he awoke. It starts straight away with the poem making it feel like he is confused and vulnerable. It could also feel like he is in a nightmare. So the same as last time, I'm using pink for any notes about the form or the language, and I'm using yellow for structure notes. Thinking at the end of the line, and he was running raw, in raw seemed hot khaki, we've got that word raw, it's a double meaning. Not only is it highlighting his discomfort, in the uncomfortable clothing, the khaki, the woolen clothes that they're expected to wear, but it also highlights his inexperience. In raw scene, hot khaki, his sweat heavy. We have the assonance and the alliteration of H. It gives us that feeling of the soldier's heavy breathing. Gives us that feeling that he's panting, that he's unfit, he's not ready for this. Stumbling across a field of clods towards a green hedge that dazzled with rifle fire, hearing, we have that unexpected image of a hedge firing bullets at him. And this would link us back to the idea that Ted Hughes likes to reference nature a lot. That dazzled with rifle fire, hearing bullets smacking the belly out of the air. This is one of our key quotes now. So that bullets smacking the belly out of the air. And we also have the, the following line as well that we're going to talk about. So here we have this violent imagery and the fact that they are smacking the belly out of the air is onomatopoeia it just shows us, it highlights the impact of the shots. And then he lugged a rifle, numb as a smashed arm. I really like that simile there. A rifle numb as a smashed as, as a smashed arm. 
We're referencing the injuries that soldiers would suffer. So we're talking about the injured soldiers. And we've also got the idea that his rifle is useless. If the fact that the soldier is carrying a useless rifle should give you this foreshadowing. As well as having a useless rifle, but we also have the idea of a smashed arm. So we should have this foreshadowing his injury. The patriotic tear that had brimmed in his eye, sweating like molten iron from the centre of his chest. So we've got two parts to write about here. We have the patriotic tear. That his patriotism... has been converted from this bravery and a sense of duty to fear. You could talk about this being like a painful reality. And then we have this idea here, the like molten iron from the centre of his chest. So the like molten iron from the centre of his chest emphasises his insignificance. And his lack of control of his situation. So emphasised insignificance or lack of control. We can also have this word that we've got coming up soon. This cold clockwork. So as well as the molten iron from the centre of his chest, the insignificance links to the cold clockwork of the stars and the nations. We'll come back to that later on. For now, this stanza, the second stanza, in bewilderment, then he almost stopped, and the poem physically stops with the sejura here within the stanza. The sejura normally within a line here, it's breaking the rhythm of the stanza up. So this stanza pauses the action, so we have a pause in the action. So it now starts to focus on the soldier. In what cold clockwork of the stars and nations? So here we have that link again to the emphasised insignificance and the lack of control that he has. And here we also have the word cold. Pardon me. The word cold emphasises the insignificance and it implies that the people in charge don't care. Moving forwards on, moving further on, like a man who has jumped up in the dark and runs listening between his footfalls for the reason of his still running. Here we have an extended simile, this wonderful set of lines, the two and a half lines that all talk about how he feels and how he feels irrational, that he's staggering blind, the panic, we get all kinds of ideas from this. So the simile creates an image of someone blind. Mm -hmm. 
and that suggests there's no rational reason for the war. And then we have this moment where we stop again. So we've stopped at the start and now we're running and then we stop again. His foot hung like statuary in mid-stride. The statuary shows us that he's been almost turned into a statue by his bewilderment. Then the shot slash for us threw up a hair. What would you expect at the end there? Well, I'd expect a break like we had at the end there. I'd expect some form of punctuation to pause here. We don't have it. That shows us that we have this continuation of an idea over, the ne over this stanza into the next. Showing us the enjambment between the stanzas. The fact that all the ideas that the chaos of war is present throughout I'm just putting the enjambment highlights, the chaos, the shot slash for us threw up a yellow hair that rolled like a flame. We have this natural imagery here. And the way he talks about the hair is absolutely wonderful. There are parts of this poem throughout that make us think of this more as like a hunt or animals than huma humanity. We have a charge to the green hedge up at the start, which seems to be more of an action, more the action of an animal who's fleeing or bolting in a field rather than soldiers charging a trench. We've got the inclusion of the yellow hair. It's really powerful because we see the soldier in a moment of confusion. He's not sure why he's there. He's not sure what he's doing. And the hair that he sees seems to spur him on, either because he doesn't want to be a coward, hence the fact that it's yellow, or because it reflects a brief moment of man and nature connecting before war once begins again. And the fact that that hair rolls like a flame shows us this frantic movement. and crawled in a threshing circle. Now we've really got this disturbing image. So we have this distressing image of out of control movement. We have open silent, its eyes standing there, which suggests pain. And it's also the fact that it's silent suggests that it's beyond expression. moving forwards, his eyes standing out and he plunges past with his bayonet towards the green hedge. We have that reference back to that dazzling green hedge up at the top. More of that natural imagery in the two parts. It's interesting as well, the placement of the green hedge in each time is in the middle of the stanza but at the end of a line. It's almost trying to get it towards the middle like the natural imagery is in the centre of everything that he's doing. So we could write about the natural image. Contrasting. With the 
wall. King, honour, human dignity, etc. Dropped like luxuries. Well, here, King, honour, human dignity. We have a list of the reasons he's joined the war. He joined it to fight for his king. He joined it to give himself honour and his family honour. He joined it for the human dignity of not letting his fellow man die for his sake, etc. But this etc. suddenly undermines all these values. So we have these values at the start that are the reasons that are persuading to go to war. So they are the persuasive reasons to go to war. But the etc. undermines them. They're worthless on the battlefield. They're dropped like luxuries. He's been reduced to a basic level. To get out of that blue crackling air, his terrors touchy dynamite. Ooh, a lovely finish there. The soldier seems to have become a weapon rather than a human being. So the soldier seems to have become a weapon. rather than a human being. Looking for our themes in this one. Two main themes to really think about. The first one being terror. The soldier throughout is absolutely terrified. The poem challenges the patriotism throughout and converts that patriotism into terror. The soldier's driven forward by fear throughout this, rather than through a more noble motive. He hasn't got this idea of patriotism thinking, I must fight for my king and queen or king and country to move me towards and kill the Germans. It's not that, it's the fear of him being killed if he doesn't. Um, and that second idea in the poem here would be for one of confusion. He's physically disorientated and also morally confused. So some of the poems that I compare this with... talking about the reality of war I would compare this really carefully with exposure or the last poem we did which is charge of the light brigade You could also compare the idea of the soldier's fear with the poem Prelude. So the full title of that poem is Extract from the Prelude, but we'll just refer to it as, the, as Prelude here. There are plenty of other way, things you could compare. The exposure and charge of the Light Brigade. You could also, pardon me, the, and the reality of war. We could talk about the effect and the dehumanisation here. So the dehumanization could also be reflected in 
remains and in the emigre where identity is stripped from people and it's almost like this soldier's identity gets stripped from the poem we start with him waking up and we finish him with him becoming touchy dynamite it's almost like he's becoming right at the end it's almost like he's becoming the weapons that he's using all right thank you for today